Welcome to another edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com. Today I'm joined by Elizabeth Benedict, a journalist and novelist whose op-ed piece in the Boston Globe in 2008 was a driving force behind the alimony reform movement in Massachusetts. She recently wrote an article for the Huffington Post about the current affairs of alimony, and that's primarily what we'll be talking about today. You can learn more about Elizabeth and her work by visiting the website elizabethbenedict.com. So Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. I appreciate your having me. Now let's first talk about the Massachusetts alimony reform that uh, you helped sort of get off the ground. Uh, first of all, why did you call the Massachusetts alimony laws me medieval? What, what was it about them that seemed so archaic? Well, how long do you have? Um, <laughs> the current laws, which, are, which have just been, uh, the legislature has just voted to overhaul these laws, but the current laws reflect ideas about men and women and marriage that are not part of the world we live in. The laws on the books are gender neutral. They don't say men do this and women do that, but the facts are not gender neutral. It turns out that 97% of alimony payers are men, which means only 3% are women, and most of the alimony in Massachusetts that's awarded is a lifetime permanent alimony that doesn't end at the payer's retirement. So you have men in nursing homes paying alimony. You have men with dementia and terminal illnesses paying alimony from their Social Security checks or from their retirement pensions, which could be, you know, worth almost nothing. And if these men stop paying, they can be sent to jail. Under current law in Massachusetts, a judge can't, cannot put an end date on alimony. And there are cases where a judge puts an end date on it, and then it's reversed on appeal. So the judges, even when they feel it should end, are, are, ha are hamstrung by the current law. Right. Um, another very disturbing feature of Massachusetts law, it's not part of the statute, but it's case law, is that if somebody marries an alimony payer, and in, in all the cases we know of, it's a woman marrying a man who pays alimony, the ex-wife can come back to court and say that she has greater financial needs, which her ex-husband now has, uh, and now has the means to give her more money because he has married somebody else. Right. And we're not talking about people who marry millionaires. We're talking about people who marry receptionists and secretaries. One other abuse that I think is really important for people to understand, the higher earner is, has to pay alimony to the lower earner. So alimony doesn't just go to uh, a woman who stayed home for 30 years to raise her children. Alimony in Massachusetts is going to a woman who makes $200,000, whereas her husband makes $250,000. And he is giving her, say, $25,000 a year to make up for the difference between their incomes, but he is forced to pay this until, he, until she dies or she remarries. There's no end to this. And that's just bizarre. Yeah. And it, it's not fair. And it's unnecessary. And the other thing that happens, everybody says, well, why don't people get prenups? Well, Massachusetts has a long, dark history of ignoring prenups. Right. And so you can have the best prenup in the world, and a judge can go and say that it's, it's uh, invalid. And the ex-wife or, or the ex-husband can get money that they shouldn't even have access to. Now, as you mentioned, the uh, Massachusetts House and Senate have approved some of these alimony reforms. So what, can, uh, what will be the new laws in regards to alimony in Massachusetts? Well, these, I just want to say the House and the Senate in Massachusetts approved these reforms unanimously. There was not a single vote against them, wow. which is just really tells you how bad these laws were right. and how much momentum there was to change them. Um, the main, one of the main things is that judges will be able to put an end date to alimony. And for shorter term marriages, there will be clear guidelines for how long alimony can go on for. There will be different kinds of alimony based on the situations of the marriage. For instance, there could be rehabilitative alimony, reimbursement alimony if somebody put somebody through school. And then for longer term marriages, there's something called durational alimony. Um, and Essentially, the longer you've been married, the higher percentage of time you will pay alimony for. 
So there is an end, even if somebody is paying it for a very long time. Okay. Um, there are also some safeguards built in for um, special cases where somebody needs alimony for longer. If somebody got divorced when both parties were 63 and the recipient felt that uh, he or she needed alimony for a few more years beyond the retirement, there are provisions for those kinds of exceptions. Or if somebody is ill or incapacitated, there are provisions for that. But the standards to, to meet those provisions for those exceptions are very high. Another good feature is that the, the income of second wives or, or new spouses cannot be considered in alimony um, determinations when somebody goes in for a modification. Finally, we've talked about uh, Massachusetts quite a bit, but what are some of the other states that desperately need alimony reform that currently is underway in Massachusetts? Well, one of the states that I'm very familiar with is Florida. And there's a group uh, in Florida called FloridaAlimonyReform.com that's trying to um, mimic in, in certain ways what Massachusetts has done um, by adopting some of the changes Massachusetts adopted, the ones that are appropriate to Florida. Because of my article, I, I've heard that New Jersey has some serious problems. There are several states in the South, I believe Georgia is one of them, that has uh, problems like this. And Tennessee is now deciding an important case about lifetime alimony and inc income e equalization. Its Supreme Court is deciding that case. Right. So there are a number of states that do um, still have these kinds of problems. But I think it's important for listeners to understand that most states in the country do not have lifetime alimony for all. And most states encourage people to have several years of alimony or short-term alimony, depending on the length of the marriage, and then become self-sufficient. This is true throughout New England, in Washington, D.C., and in New York. And many, many states in the country, a lifetime alimony for all is not the law of the land. Well, Elizabeth, I want to thank you for your uh, continued work with alimony reform, and thanks for joining me on today's show. Well, thank you for having me, and I appreciate your interest in the subject. It's a very, very important subject these days. You're right. That was Elizabeth Benedict. You can learn more about her and her work by visiting her website, elizabethbenedict.com. That'll do it for this edition of Dad's Divorce Live. I'm Matt Allen, editor of dadsdivorce.com.